afternoon. Today I'm going to share with you the research paper I wrote during my MA program in the Institute of Social Studies in the, in the Netherlands. My paper is about gender production of subject positions at community health workers in the Philippines. I conducted this study from April to August 2007. I divided my presentation today in three parts. Uh, first, some background of the research, uh, the key findings, and lastly, the conclusion. Let me start by sharing with you why I chose this topic. Um, as a social worker by profession, I am particularly concerned with the result of the interaction of individuals, groups, and communities with their social environments, and its impact on the fulfillment of their full human potentials, the enjoyment of their rights, and the improvement of the quality of their lives. Moreover, I also had several engagements with community health workers, which left lasting impressions on me. And before leaving for Hague in 2006, I was also able to work with them on a foreign-funded project on health, gender, and governance, being implemented by a local NGO in Sorsomon. Community health workers are more popularly known as Barangay Health Workers in the Philippines. I will use uh, CHW and BHW in my presentation. They comprise 72% of our total public health workforce. Republic Act 7883, or the Barangay Health Workers Incentives Act, uh, defines them as persons who have undergone training programs under a accredited government and non government organization and who voluntarily renders primary health care services in the uh, community after having been accredited to function as such in by the local health board. When I started doing this research, I asked why women and some men engage in community quality health work. I found it perplexing that poor people would willingly render community services without monetary remuneration when they could use their time to earn money for their families material needs. Therefore, for um, four months, I asked myself, is community volunteer health work an issue of exploitation or empowerment? On one hand, I thought that they must be exploited because they engage in an unpaid work. Uh, Binaria defines volunteer work as work whose beneficiaries must not be members of the immediate family. There can't be any direct payment. It is unpaid work by definition. And the work must be part of an organized program. Volunteer work is also one of the sectors where women's work is not properly accounted for in the national system of accounts, the same as household work, informal work, and subsistence production. But in this uh, study, it's important to point out that while community health workers are regarded as volunteers, their beneficiaries also include their families because they are assigned in the neighborhood where they reside. They receive honoraria from the barangay or local government in addition to the medicine, some donations in time, and other material and monetary benefits, while their work is presumed and unremunerated. On the other hand, I also thought that women health workers are empowered because they participate in community activities. Finding out the reason why men choose to become volunteer health workers when they are expected to be breadwinners with their families is more compelling. So I'm sure and tired of all these debates going through my head, I decided to use the research paper to explain the question and challenge my own assumptions. So in this research, I ask the following questions. How are subject positions or ways of being a community health workers produced in the context of via the social, political, cultural, economic discourses and practices about community health work and community health workers? Second, what are the spaces within which community health workers locate themselves as health volunteers and what strategies are used to enable these locations? Are there emancipatory and transformative potentials of these locations? To find answers to my research questions, I uh, adapted the following with some secondary data. Did primary data collection to interviews, post group discussion. I also attended some meetings of uh, local and city health officials. Throughout my research, I used feminist standpoint methodology, taking women, my key informants' knowledge, the community health workers about their situation as their starting point of their research. I had a total of 17 uh, BHW informants, 15 of whom are females, and only two males. On a more theoretical level, I did this study because I realized that as volunteer health workers, the 
THW are situated at the intersection of the private sphere and the public sphere. The P and IP work, labor, between production and social reproduction. If this is where they are located, at an intersection, where there are perceived clear-cut definitions of each sphere and oppositional dualities, where there are set of expectations and prescribed rules, norms, and values, I wonder how do community health workers negotiate the demands called for in BE situation in this inter intersection? How do they position themselves individually and as a group in the different domains of their lives? The family and household, where they maintain social relationships and responsibilities as husbands or wives, fathers or mothers, or even grandmother or grandfather. The community, where they serve, they serve as volunteer, the field of healthcare system where they belong, and the state, both national and local levels, which give the organization and political framework of their work. So in this research, I use the concept of subjectivity, agency and subject positions to avoid simple empowerment and exploitation dichotomies with which I started thinking about community health workers. Before I went to the field, my understanding of the concept of subject, subject was agent, who is, who has free will, who determines his or her place in life, or this is destiny and decides to be free. So with this, I expected to find uh, community health workers or activists who are organized, who are aware of their rights, who are empowered as they collectively fight against the system which they perceive as opposing them. Paradoxically, this understanding of the agent is linked to the understanding of a victim, exploited victim or either who either suffers or are treated active agents and fighters against the exploitation. So this is how I perceive uh, uh, when I went to the field, exploited, vulnerable, and able to free themselves from the clutches of the powerful. Nonetheless, during my research, my field work, particularly in this part, I was continuously confronted by a rather different subject. One whom I cannot easily classify as either activist or victim. I can put them in a box. I'm trying to put them in a box. While doing Lekman and my struggles in the field, I call such a subject a discursive subject. This is a subject that is both constituted and constituting, a product of the fluctuating, changing, and often conflictual historical and social influences that intention it. So this is a post-structuralist conceptualization of the subject, which displaces the dichotomy, the activist victim dichotomy, and assumes that subjectivities are multiple complex and fluid. So it also is, uh, redefines agency, which does not entail a pre-discursive eye that requires that subjects find agency in the discursive spaces to them in their particular historical period. So in this understanding, agency is created by the discourse of that subject. I also use gender, defined by Scott, as a constitutive element of social relationships based on perceived differences between the sexes. Gender is also a primary way of signifying relationships of power. My study showed that subject positions and subjectivities for community health workers are continuously ne negotiated and challenged as power is exercised in many different domains of interaction, in marriage and parental relations, among community health workers, and in the hierarchies of the healthcare system, and in the corridors of the local governments. So depending on the social field, specific social field, community health workers assume different subject positions. A social field can be seen as a dynamic, multidimensional set of relationships containing possibilities for liberation as well as domination. So in the family, dominant notions of femininities and masculinities and their means and practices offer community health workers different possibilities for subject positions or ways of being with rewards and costs in forms of monetary and material benefits, recognition and approval. But while, com but while uh, community health work provides women space to extend their influence as caregiver from the home to a larger community and thus exercise some power, it also requires that they continue to perform their socially pre prescribed roles as mothers, homemakers, and wives, or renegotiate these roles and escape them by providing the family another kind of benefit, uh, such as additional income through their honorarium, uh, free medicine, like knowing the nurses and doctors for easy access to medical care, and etc. On the part of the male community health workers, while community 
plant work is not openly acknowledged as another source of income, it is seen as a source of man's pride and recognition, as this statement would attest. So my children, though they seem to be even though they, their father doesn't earn any salary, he is a barangay worker and he does it for public service. So because community health work is seen as bringing benefits to the family, what is culturally defined as a man or a woman in the family is negotiated and extended and redefined. So this can be manifested in different ways. So these are the things that we do. They combine communal roles and community work. So women bring their children to seminars or meetings. Or there's an exchange of breadwinner, homemaker roles, assigned to husband and wife, and also family bonding and solidarity. So community, this research show, means many different things to many different people. On one hand, uh, the community health work is defined by international declarations, national laws, and local state and organizational policies. So with these definitions of health work, there are specific underpinnings and assumptions about community within the community health, within which community health workers are expected or supposed to work and into which they are supposed to engage. So the primary health care approach seems to assume the notion of a notion of community which is homogeneous, static, harmonious units within which people share common interests and needs. Some authors argue that this implicit articulation of community conceals power relations within community. And further mass prices in needs and interests based on terms of age, class, caste, ethnicity, religion, and gender. The PhD approach also emphasizes community participation over dependence on doctors and over dependence on doctors. So if, if the notion of community is built around solidarity and self-reliance, well in fact communities are multiple overlapping and shifting social spatial sites of differences in conflict. So one of the uh, roles of community health workers is to be a community organizer, but this is one of the uh, roles that they don't perform. Or, yes, because uh, it, 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 I, I'm arguing that it can be linked to this notion of community. That if community health workers are expected to be community organizers, Community organizing should involve recognizing the diversity of needs and interests, which govern relationships and dictate how people generate each other. So if community organizing involves challenging dominant cultural and institutional practices of which community health workers are members, their communities are also places where they derive recognition and approval for their work. And thus they are put in a double band position of wanting to serve them all. But at the same time, challenging dominant norms and practices on which some of this recognition and approval are premised. Dominant notions of femininity and masculinity in the context of family relations, as seen in the previous discussion, are an apt example. On the other hand, interviews with community health workers show that community means many different things, and that depending on where and how community health workers position themselves, they refer to many different communities, their own neighborhood and village where they work, community of their immediate co-workers in the health station, or a larger community of being in the form of association or as a group with specific social and professional standing interests. So, community means the health care system, the neighborhood, or the social uh, community health worker association. So in the health care system, they are seen as partners in health care delivery, but not necessarily subjects of the health care organization. Participation and mobilization, they are Inside, out, outsider, but at the same time an outsider. They are regarded as partners, but they are not part of the organizational structure of the public health delivery system. Okay, within the community health care, community health workers find some space to influence and exert change. But there, too, there are different hierarchies that operate based on age, length of experience, and belong to official health system, as the following statements reveal. Okay, in the neighborhood. They see themselves as representative of the medical profession and at the same time lead to the people they serve and thus possess different kinds of knowledge and skills. They define themselves as accorded with respect, gratitude, and approval for the services they render. In the community health association, they are projected as unified harmonious entity so that they would be able to access material support outside the organization. But within this organization, there are also conflicts 
and misunderstanding which are seldom taken into account because of the threat it would pose to the association. Okay. Thus, for the community of workers, community is not only the place for their work, a site in which they exercise their skills and competencies, or a social context in which they establish relationship with people for whom they provide health services, but a community, more importantly, is also a source of many different rewards and a site of struggles for these rewards. Um, last, uh, there is, uh, just a look at the engagement of, in the political system. Okay. So in the political system, uh, community health workers may assume a different position altogether using what Mama calls acquired disposition. So they use a space of subordination as a site of power. So they humble themselves to persons in authority to be able to fulfill their ends. So, because local politician, uh, can you please give me another like five minutes? Be okay. I hope it's okay. Um, local politicians appoint themselves, appoint them, and can dismiss them. They decide on matters pertaining to their incentives, how much, who will receive them, and when. So their relationship with politicians, they feel a sense of gratitude and dependence towards them. So they follow what politicians say. But this apparently submissive position of dependence doesn't mean that social, work, uh, social workers, community health workers are totally powerless or do nothing to protect their interests. Okay? They use, um, they use less direct ways of engagement. They use informal channels, not the formal institutions, but people who can serve smoking okay. people. So community health workers strategize both individually and as a group what possibilities are available to them in dealing with people in power, keeping, like keeping a low profile during election time. Same officials too, they use both formal and informal channels in relating with the community health workers. But when community health workers relate with them, politicians often have the communication done through formal channels. So their ways of communication, which are a characterized using the local term of Apakubaba, shows community health workers' understanding of the official power structures and their own dependent place within them. Okay. So they engage not, they don't engage in confrontational manner in dealing with structures of power because they, they recognize these, these power relations, and they engage with them with the means affordable to them. So this allows them to draw moral, professional, and financial benefits in a situation of unequal power relations and to have a sense of personal and collective worth in a way. To conclude, so in, in, in engaging with marginalized groups, it is important to recognize the discourses in their social fields of interaction and to analyze the dynamics between their implications on the lived experiences of people who use them or exit in them. And there are no clear, clear cut boundaries between different social fields in which community health workers live. They flow from each other and they give meaning to each other. And the boundaries between an individual, his or her family, and the community are not fixed or sharp or distinct. The distinction between the private and the public is blurred. But this doesn't mean, however, that there are no politi dominant political, economic, and social structure of power that impact in the world and work of the community health workers. Um, when I first the community health workers as a group, I thought, wow, these people can elect our next over more. I believe they can. But how and what will make it possible to depend on many things, not only on them? I started this research thinking about empowerment and exploitation economy. But I learned from the field that there is more to it than fitting, that merely fitting community health workers and in categories of exploited victims and power victims. And while I struggle to overcome my own assumptions and to find my own position here in different subjects of my research, I recognize the complexity and richness of their lived experiences. And I understand that plurality and multiplicity of sources and resistance and cooperation are necessary for substantial social transformation for the lives of community networks in the Philippines. Salamat po, just one minute.